someone has to start. All right, all right. I'll start it. I'll start it. Ready? We're, do we're doing this in one take. All right? It's already recording. All right. Are you ready? That should be sandwich. Hey, geeks. It's Rebecca Rudin. And Samantha Kuhn. Amanda Lamb. Jen Wynn. Heidi. And Glenn. And when we're not running the Wine and Dine 5K. In the parking lot doing it virtually. We're, We're supporting, supporting our, our friends. friends. We're going, going geeking on Walt Disney World with Curtis and the whole geeking family. That brings great memories of the Wine and Dine Run Disney event coming up really soon. It's a fun event. I know a bunch of my friends will be down there doing that again this year. Hey, Disney geeks, Curtis Stone here. I'm the Podfather host of this amazing Geekin' family. Welcome to episode 586 of the Geekin' on Walt Disney World podcast. In this week's episode, I'm joined by my friends Wendy, Samantha, Holly, Kate, Dan, and Andy to recap their trips to Disney World, celebrating Samantha's birthday, and Kate's beating cancer while sharing tips on planning, dining, and experiencing the magic of special events like Moonlight Magic and Sangria University. I've been having fun talking and hanging out with friends like Wendy, Samantha, Kate, Holly, Dan, and Andy shows up late, <laughs> joining us, reviewing Disney parks and Disney World tips and hacks for over 10 years. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I started the podcast with my daughter, Lindsay, talking about our Disney World trips, and we bring on our Disney geek friends to tell their trip stories. Our listeners are so positive, caring, generous, and they are experienced Disney geeks. You'll get lots of ideas and tips for your next trip to Disney World from their real-world experiences and trip reports. We encourage a family atmosphere here on the show. We'd love for you two to join our Geekin family. Check out our amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin on WDW Family. Great place to ask questions, share your trip pictures, and have fun with one of the best group of Disney World geeks on the internet. The podcast is 100% Sponsored by our amazing listeners. They're awesome. And they know we're independent Disney authorized travel guides with FTC Elite Travel. I just saw we are earmarked. Heather, who owns the travel agency, was down in Disney World for some training. Really proud of you, Heather. Great job. And we'd love to be your travel guides, help you book your room, tickets, and dining reservations. You'll notice many of our guests on the podcast book their trips or they transfer their trip bookings to the traveling Tierras. They Helped out with this trip we're talking about this week. That's my wife, Margita. We call her Mama. She's got a great friend, Auntie Judy, who helps out tremendously. And they are the Traveling Tierras. Email them, travelingtierras at gmail.com to get started. Just check the show notes on that app that you listen to the show. You'll see their email as well as mine. Reach out to us. We would love to talk to you about your Disney World and Disney Cruises, going out to Disneyland, even Disneyland Paris. Universal Studios, getting excited about the new Epic Universe coming next year. This week's episode, yeah, it's a bunch of my friends from our August trip. We're going to be talking about how they were booking the trip, the planning and some of the surprises that came about, travel stories like the flights and accommodations, birthday celebration for Samantha and celebrating Kate's beating cancer, dining Experiences, of course, Summer House and the Cookies, Sangria University versus a bourbon crawl that our good friend Scott Daves, Dan, and I did. Citricos, first time I was there, really love it, Dan, too. Rainy Adventures and Fine Dining Stories, Festival Favorites, and Creme Brulee Debate, Breakfast Beignets, and Pretzel Bun Sandwiches, Skipper Canteen and Dining Reservations. Moonlight Magic and the Four Park Challenge. Wow. Final thoughts and favorite moments. Now, it can get a little chaotic having six of my friends on the show and enthusiastically sharing their trip. We just can't help having a lot of fun on our trips to Disney World. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's hard to do a podcast. I just can't. 
<laughs> so hard to organize things. It's a miracle. New York trip came, came off as well as it did, quite honestly. <laughs> Not that I was thinking it was going to go bad. I always think the positive. All right, so let's kick this off. How should we kick this off? Well, I've been looking forward to doing this podcast. I got a bunch of friends on here to talk about an awesome trip we did in August. It's really hard to get everybody scheduled together, but I got a couple of them that were able to come, especially some of the keys that we were celebrating for. But please give a warm geek and family a welcome. We got Dan is here, Wendy, Samantha, Kate, and Holly. <laughs> Hello, my friends. We will try to get this in order. I'll, I'll go around my squares here. I got four squares and I got two people in one of the squares. So we got five people here from the trip we did in August. Well, let's start with the ladies. Let's talk to Samantha Kuhn because I think this was firstly starting in honor of you. Am I right? This trip in August? Mm -hmm. Well, when Wendy got a little <laughs> booking happy and <laughs> Looked at two bedroom at Beach Club for Moonlight Magic and said to me, do you want to come? And I was like, my birthday's in August, so I guess we could do it as a birthday trip. And then it kind of snowballed. That's right. I knew that. As I'm, things do. I'm editing my podcast trip report that Wendy hosted, and I remember her saying that now. But <laughs> that was a good excuse to start gathering some geeks to go down. This happened. Has this been a few years in a row, Samantha, that your birthday has gathered a few geeks to <laughs> enjoy the parks with you? This is year number three. Mm, we did one, one, the first year was before my birthday. Last year was on my actual birthday. And then this year was the week after, but pretty good. That's a lot of fun. And this year, Kate came along. Now, how did Kate and Holly make it onto <laughs> this trip? Oops. <laughs> so we had beds. Wendy booked a two bedroom. So we had beds to fill. So the reason I booked a two bedroom is. I got the dates of Moonlight Magic way in advance, and I have Beach Club is one of my home resorts, so I'm able to book that at the 11 month mark. So it was, I don't even remember when it was like February or March when the dates came out. And I said, Oh, I don't know who's going to go, whether it's going to be my kids and my grandkids or our family or whatever. But I said, I like should just book three nights at Beach Club so I can go to Moonlight Magic. Mm -hmm. And then not really forgetting about it, but we had other trips in the meantime. And then I guess a couple months ago, and I had mentioned to Sam, I said, do you think you might want to go for Moonlight Magic? She says, it's my birthday. And then the last book, can we ask? So it snowballed. And then I think Kate was going to be there anyways. Kate, were you going to be down there anyways? Or no? No. 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 Okay. With how so neither one of you were. No. no. <laughs> okay. We just added on. I knew you guys were going to be there. I didn't think I could do it. The dog's making a weird one. <laughs> so I was playing around one night and I found... We have a new um, airline that just opened in Portland and they were having really good deals. So I booked it. And then I messaged Samantha says, there's still room for me. And she said, yes, there's one spot left. And then I remembered Kate. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds terrible because it's been a year that I've been going on these trips without Kate because of everything she's been going through. And I, I got used to asking about her, which sounds awful. And then I was like, oh no, Samantha, does this mean there's no room for Kate? <laughs> and so then we well, then you were just on your own. And then Wendy yes. went and went rogue again. And then booked us all in. <laughs> we were on a text. So I'm like, do you want me to see if I can get another room? Hold on, let me look. And then the next thing I knew, I booked more two bedrooms so they could stay. So we had two, two nights in Animal Kingdom, a two bedroom and two nights in Beach Club. And it all happened within 20 minutes. And Sam's like, I was at work. I went and I came back. It was like, it was already taken yeah. care of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was in the woods with no reception. And then I'm like, whoa, what just happened here? <laughs> Classic Wendy, because nobody even, it was just four text messages from Wendy right in a row. Nobody even <laughs> responded to say, oh yeah, why don't you look? She just said, should I see if I can get us a two bedroom? I can get us a two bedroom for this. I booked us a two bedroom. <laughs> it's amazing how these all come together. I still am confused. I don't know if the audience is confused also how this all came together. So did you end up having one two bedroom in two different places? Yeah, correct. We were there for four nights. I was there for four nights. Sam, I think was there for an extra night, but I was there for two nights in Animal Kingdom hmm. and then two nights in Beach Club. And I think Sam came the night before. And I think you and Dan came even the day before that. 
Oh, we'll get to me and Dan. Hold on okay. a second. I haven't finished with you guys yet. Now, okay. how many how women you... were in the rooms? It was, depends what? on the night. It depends <laughs> on the night. Oh, boy. Let's... <laughs> the first night, it was six women. Yep. And then the, the rest of the time, it was four women and Andy. So I don't know where that fits in, but. <laughs> so who were the other people? So you had Andy and you had. We started with Jackie and Selena and then they went home and Andy came. Okay. So just Jackie and Selena were the other ones in the room and Andy. Okay. Yes. And I came a day early. I technically came two days early, but I was in Fort Lauderdale for a night. And then Jackie and Selena and I drove up on Friday and stayed at Old Key West for a night. All right. So I think I'm all caught up. And now. And, and Holly came the day before and stayed at Pop. At Pop, Pop for, for a night. Day. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. Okay. I'm all caught up there. So, Dan. Were you complicated or how did you figure into this trip? It's along for the ride. <laughs> I am, I was glad to tag along with the group. Got a message from you, Kurt, that said, hey, I'm headed down. I'm looking for a roommate. Would you be interested? Very excited. I think we were supposed to go down on Friday. When I looked at the airlines, though, there was really good jet blue deals. And if I flew in late on Thursday, I could get a good deal, set it up to come in on Thursday. And, and I was just going to grab someplace off property and then meet you. But uh, Margita was able to snag an extra night at pop. So you're like, Hey, I'll just come down a day early on Thursday. That's a good excuse to <laughs> come down early. So did that. And then the way JetBlue works is the day of, I could see if I could switch flights and I was able to actually get on an earlier flight. So I was able to make it in a little bit earlier on Thursday and, and meet you on Thursdays and w staying with you the whole time at uh, pop century, which was nice. Oh, I'm glad you said it was nice because, you know, the big I question like, you don't is. You have to lie, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be invited back, right? I told this on my trip report to Wendy. Remember, Dan, when we met my friend Joe, who I hadn't seen in 30 years plus, yeah. and we met him and his wife up in the Japan Pavilion. What was the first question you asked my old roommate who I used to live with when I first got out of college? I said, I said what kind of roommate was he? <laughs> Trying to get the scoop. <laughs> first night, we haven't even been together. And uh, yeah, but that was, I laughed my head off. That was funny. Now we, I wasn't too worried. Dan's an ex Marine and I figured he's been around the world and been with lots of uh, situations with guys. Yeah like, I, uh, yeah. like I told you earlier, I've had worse roommates. <laughs> so you were great. I, I felt that I really felt confident. I couldn't do too bad, <laughs> but we don't spend my, much time in the room. We were going pretty hard. Weren't we guys? Yeah. yeah. We did we a lot. Were. Gonna... I think you guys were going a little harder than us. We yes. were a little slow in the mornings. I have to say, I usually would broke drop the parks. I usually like getting to the parks early and getting stuff done. But I think on this trip, we ended up going, I think on more rides than I've ever had with a bunch of geeks together. But we really didn't start early. We were maybe like 9.30ish as opposed to 8 o'clock. Mm. Yeah. There were mimosas that had to be consumed. Uh -huh. We had to clean out the refrigerator before we moved from Animal Kingdom to right. Bay Lake Tower. Hence, we had to use all the orange juice and champagne, coincidentally. Samantha, are you using the microphone I got for you? I am. Wow. <laughs> nice. Are you so proud? Do I I'm sound so amazing? I'm excited. You sound so amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. Let's talk about... Here, it's the least I can do since I'm going to have sirens going in the background all night, probably. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so apologize ahead of time. This could be a little chaotic, but uh, I'm hoping these guys have learned over the years how to keep it organized. But you guys are big planners. Wendy and Samantha especially has done a lot of planning for all of our geek meets. And let me ask, let me start with Kate and uh, and Holly. Was there a special thing you guys were celebrating for this too? We didn't mention that yet. I didn't know that it was going to be involving me at all. Okay. I think there was probably a chat that I was so invited to. <laughs> Sounds like us. We've had a lot of those over the past year. Yeah. yeah. We've been talking a lot about you over the last year. Okay. Yeah. All good though. All good. Yes. So you were celebrating. We all had pins that Samantha, I think, made for us that were very impressive, according to the cast members. Yeah. I know. I feel like I've made those pins several buttons several times and nobody has said a word about it, but I guess. Birthday, Samantha. <laughs> and they all wanted to know because what it didn't say what it was for. It just said we were celebrating Kate. So they all wanted to know who Kate was 
and why we were celebrating her. So. And it was the pin too that had, or the way you had the plastic cover around. Yeah, they thought we had taken a Disney button and put like some special cover over it so it wouldn't get damaged. And I was like, no, I just printed some paper off it. Put the computer and stuck it in these buttons. Yeah, they were so impressed. Then they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> they seemed very serious and honest about their praise of that. But so, Kate, so you were surprised about this celebration then? Yeah, okay. I didn't know anything about it. How d were you? Did you have fun? Yes, it was a great time. <laughs> I know I got free cupcakes. Did you get so any say, free we got stuff? Lots of freebies, yeah. even when Kate yeah. wasn't there. When Kate wasn't there. I, <laughs> I got a bunch of free things. Yes. Like what? At Snowman Lounge, I got a dessert. It was like or these little candy bar things with marshmallow in them. And they had written on the plate in it's chocolate, right. celebrating, celebrating being, being cancer, cancer free. free. It brought tears to my eyes, actually. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> and other people in the restaurant saw it and were clapping. We're clapping yeah. and yeah. cheering. And very special yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah. And we got a free round of champagne at Citra right. Coats. At Citra yep. Coats. Yep, with our dessert. Um, I think my favorite was the Dwayne Chip and Dale. Yes, that was. Oh, yeah. I yeah. still had. I'm, I'm going to keep that sign forever. They made a special sign when we met Chip and Dale. They were cute. And they gave me a little stuffed animal. Oh, wow. But yeah. it was actually more than that. It was the whole character interaction. It was. Yes. It was. Chip yeah. and Dale were actually, we were the last group that was going to see them before they took a break. And when they found out why Kate was there, they just went all out. Like I said, they got her the little stuffed animal and they just were getting pictures with her and they kept wanting to come up. They that just, was probably the best fun. character interaction I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. Those are the cutest outfits too. That it was really special. Yeah, possibly that. with the dinosaur yeah. outfits that they wear for that one. That was great. So yeah, Samantha, that's been on my list for so long and I had to get it in before Dino Land goes away. Oh, you hadn't <laughs> seen that before? I had never met yeah. them before. Oh, yeah, that's a great one. I've never met them in their dinosaur outfits. I've met Chip and Dale. Super cute. Many a time. <laughs> now, Samantha, when I reached out to you, so people probably already heard my story. I was wanting to do something somewhere, somehow. And Margita said, when are your friends going down and booked it? And when I talked to you, you had a great itinerary, I thought, already. <laughs> if I were to pick something, I think when Dan and I started talking about it and some of the things that you had planned, I was like, yeah, a lot of the new stuff that I'd never done before or some of the things I've missed out on several times, a lot of times with the geeks too. So what was on the itinerary that you guys planned for this trip? We had the big thing that I was excited that you were able to do was Sangria University because that's mm -hmm. a favorite of mine. So that was on the itinerary. Uh, Citra Coast is almost always on the itinerary. How come that's become a favorite of many geeks I've noticed doing my podcast? It's just the best. Yeah. The food is great. The service is great. The atmosphere is very pretty and calm and relaxing, I think. Yeah, good food. Mm -hmm. great. I've learned now. Yeah, it's one of my favorites now, too. It's right up in there in the top. All right. What else did we have planned? Do you remember? We had the drone show at Summer House planned. Yeah, drone show at the Summer House, which we've heard lots of great reviews of that restaurant and bonus with the drone show. So did they ever charge us for that? Um, maybe you should tell me no, afterwards. No, two, two of you got out free of charge. Maybe, three, maybe all four of you. Scott free? <laughs> Half of us didn't pay the fee. <laughs> uh, that was a funny one because I made that on open table and I originally made it for four. It's going to be me and Wendy and Jackie and Selena. And then Kay and Holly said they could come. So I called and said, can I add two people to the reservation? And they said, yeah, no problem. You'll just have to pay for the extra two people when they check in. And I said, okay. Hmm. Then a couple of weeks later, Kurt and Dina decided to come. Hmm. So I called back and said, I have a reservation. I need to add two people to it. And they could see in the system I had already added two people to the reservation. So she said, oh, yeah, we see. We've got the two people that you added. It's now a party of six. And I said, yes, I did call a few weeks ago and add two people. But now I need to add two, two more people. It's a reservation for six. It needs to be a reservation for eight. And so they said, okay, the extra two will just have to pay when they get there. I said, okay. But I don't think anybody ever said anything about it. No. no. <laughs> oh, well. That's the bonus I get for doing a podcast. We are different. 
Samantha and Wendy could talk to this too, because you guys do a lot of this arranging of restaurants, but we are different than other parties that go to Disney World, I can imagine. <laughs> yes. Just a bit. We yeah. we make a lot of changes. Last minute. I think one of the things about the summer house, it was just so busy. It was just, we had a great meal and we had a great location. We were able to see the show, but I think it was just so busy and so crowded that hmm. probably the extra four people who had to pay just got lost in the shuffle, my guess. Let's go around the room, talk about summer house. Dan, what'd you think of summer house? I know you felt the same way that I did. These guys had a great itinerary. You're a great planner, but we looked at that list and went, yeah, I'm all about that. Yeah, they did. I, I will tell you, I really enjoyed this trip because as the planner, I always have to set all this stuff up and make all the reservations. And at this, I was just like falling in on the reservations and you guys were awesome. And I thank you for that. And I was able to just to sit back and say, okay, where, where are we going next? What are we doing? So it was great. Summer house was good. I had the, I think I had the fish tacos, enjoyed that. I don't know if we'll talk about it, just Disney Springs in general and how we, even before the meal, we were with Scott Davidson went around to a, a few places, a really, really fun time. And then the drone show was just so unique and really, really enjoyable. And just the company also, obviously. So we had, I had a great time. It was fun. All right, let's go around. Wendy, what did you think of Summer House? Have you been there before? I was never there before, but it was very different than I expected. I don't know. I think I was expecting to be more bar-like food. And I think it was better than that. I ended up having a shared a flatbread pizza and I shared a artichoke appetizer and they were both really delicious. Mm, perfect. Um, and like I said, the food was a, a better quality than I would have anticipated. And again, it was very busy. I think our, the service was very good, especially how busy it was. And I was impressed with that. I forgot to mention the cookies at the end. They were, and I can <laughs> circle back to that, but they were really good too. I agree. Dan shared them with me one night we had what did you get? Which types did you get, Dan? What were the three? Oh, was I, it three? I did. There was a like a double chocolate one. There was a chocolate chip one. And there was a, I think there was a peanut butter yeah. one. And yeah, all three of those were really good. Yeah. I, my vote was the peanut butter one. That was my favorite. Very moist. I, I, I hate to say this, but I've never had Gideon's cookies. So I don't know how they compare to Gideon's cookies, but they were very good. I think I, I like them. They're big and they're thick. Gideon's are obnoxiously big. So you like that sort of thing, <laughs> but yeah, I really liked the ones that you got. Those were a nice treat. All right. Kate and Holly, what'd you guys think of summer house? First time there? Yes. Hmm. I thought it was pretty good. It was a little bit spicy for me. Hmm. I, I think, what did we get? The meatballs? We got meatballs, the jalapeno oh, cornbread. Yeah. And, and the Brussels, Brussels sprouts. sprouts. We shared those three things. I think the meatballs were a little bit spicier than I was expecting and the cornbread, yes, it had jalapenos, but it was a little bit spicier than I was. Right. But it was pretty good. It was yeah. pretty good. I wasn't hungry when I left. And we got cookies, too. And we got cookies, yeah. I think most people got cookies. What did you think of the cookies? They were pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Ah. I wasn't blown. I wasn't blown away. <laughs> so you're more in the Gideons, then. I'm not even blown away by those, actually. Okay. I'm just like a person. <laughs> I did try, someone in our party got lemon that we tried later and i out of all the ones i tried that was my favorite that isn't what i ordered but oh, okay. i did like that one the best i think why are there better cookies in disney world we just had samantha carpin on recently talking about all of her cookie exploits is there a better cookie in disney world i've got one sitting right over there <laughs> <Yeah>. from <laughs> disney world yeah <laughs> i brought it home for her the oh. one from the caramel the germany caramel yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's yeah. a good answer. That is a great bakery, isn't it? I was yeah. thinking the same thing. That was open early morning. World Showcase never used to be open, even around, especially the backside. I was surprised. Because there wasn't big attractions back there. There is. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody cared about going there. I was thinking about that because Ratatouille is open, of course, and Frozen, but nothing really way back there. So I was still surprised in Germany that you could get in there. But yeah. I would agree with you. Those there's some which which kind is that one that you guys are munching on now? I haven't munched on it yet. It's still <laughs> in the package. <laughs> it's the uh, the gingerbread. Yeah, the gingerbread. gingerbread and, it's got the yeah. cream in the <laughs> yeah. middle. 
Yeah. And Dan. Yes, Dan looks very excited. I, I am so jealous because as we're walking around, <laughs> Jackie was telling me about, some, we like synced up on the types of foods that we like as we were talking about some desserts. And she's like, you got to try the gingerbread cookie at, at the Germany place. And yeah. she checked and they, it was, it's seasonal, so they don't serve it. And then when it came back up, she actually sent me a message. The gingerbread cookie wow. is back. You got to go get it. So <laughs> I'm interested to see how you guys like it. Yeah. Oh, well, I've had it before. I know I like it. <laughs> yeah. Super good answer. Those are super good. I, I, you, you can't miss out on the Germany pavilion for those baked goods, for sure. Those are super. Samantha. No, I was texting her this weekend. I said, what do you want me to bring back for you? She's like, bring me back one of those cookies if you end up in Germany. <laughs> yeah, good answer. Samantha, what did you think of Summer House? I liked it a lot. The food was actually, I think, similar to what I much better than I was expecting. The food was much better than I was expecting and the cookies weren't as good as I was expecting. Okay. This, you guys are a tough crowd. I can remember most people really <laughs> raving about. I think the... Maybe we had too high of expectations because so many people have raved and raved and raved about them. Oh, but that's... I thought they were going to be like life changing cookies. Mm, yeah. Interesting point because I always say to people that are going to Disney world, be careful, especially when they're doing something new, even for us veterans, keep your expectations. Don't get, I don't know, don't get them up too high because you might get disappointed, but okay. Do you remember what you had there? I had, luckily I took pictures because I wasn't prepared to talk about what I had. So I quickly, <laughs> I don't, okay, I know I took a picture of this. And then I had to pair it up with the menu. I think I had the salmon poke nachos. All right. And they were very good. They were pretty spicy. But I like spicy. And then we also had, did we talk about the cheesy dream puffs? Oh, yeah. Oh, what was that? Yeah. It was like these little cheesy dream puffs. <laughs> <laughs> these dreamy cheese puffs. That's so descriptive. <laughs> they were like a little, I was expecting them to be like the Brazilian cheese bread at Skipper Canteen. And they really weren't. They were like little, I don't know, bread of. <laughs> they were. Extremely, <laughs> they, they were small puffs. I mean, if you were cheese, then you would dream about, but they were more of a hollow, like a popover almost. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. a but smaller than a popover. Maybe it was the size of a little bit bigger than an acorn, so it was very light and floppy on the outside, and inside it had the cheese. It was a little bit, it was less dense, so it was a little bit more airy and it had cheese in it. All right, I'm gonna go over to the Sangria University versus the bourbon crawl that Dan and I were going to do. Can you talk to me about the controversy <laughs> that we were under, Dan, for the bourbon crawl or Sangria University? Absolutely. So we knew they were going to do Sangria University. We were late add-ons. And at the time, the Sangria University was all filled up. So we're like, okay, while they're doing that, maybe we can do our own guy version of something because that was the lazy ladies activity so we were thinking let's do uh, some type of bourbon crawl around disney springs and working through that and then samantha has been she's awesome she's been she was checking periodically to see if things were opening up and she's like there's two reservations available for sangria <laughs> somebody grab them so i did wind up grabbing those two and uh, then we were still like okay do we want to do the bourbon crawl do we want to do sangria because i still cancel it and I think we threw it out to the group and Samantha in particular was adamant that no, do Sangria University. I've been this trying to get to, You'll love it. to Sangria so. University for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And I knew I'm never going to be able to get Margita out of the park for the two hours of Sangria University. This was my window of opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it turned out to be a very, very wise advice. So it was that, yeah. that, that was great. It was very enjoyable. In a way, during this trip, and I don't know why I felt this way, because Samantha and the ladies would never make us feel this way. At least they wouldn't be honest with us, Dan. If we were crashing their princess party, they wouldn't really say so. But yep, that, And that was part of the dilemma, right? We're yes. like, <clears throat> we were the, we called her, we were even going to get the princess security t-shirts, right. right? That's right. And we didn't want to feel like we were crashing the party. So we were, it was a bit of a dilemma, but I'm glad they acknowledged, hey, you guys, you need to come to, to do the Sangre University. It was a great time. Yeah, it was a hard decision. So I said to Dan, all right, let's do this. This is it. Cause we got to make a decision or we got to cancel it. And I said, let's just message Samantha to ask her what we should do. And she pretty much said, come to Sangria University. So that was that, but we lucked out. We ended up doing both. 
Yeah, Eric for summer and, house. And you should have known that if you put it to me, anything versus Sangria University, I'm almost always going to say Sangria University. Well, I was pretty sure of that. So I was okay with that decision. That was a lot of fun. Anyone else want to speak to Sangria University? Has What level of experience do you guys have with Sangria University? <laughs> Kate and Holly, what's are you that undergrads? My, yeah. Yeah. Second time. So, I don't know. Are we master's level? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's like math. My well. second time. So, and then Chris Futrell told me that no, our first one was our associates. Oh, okay. So oh. we're, we have bachelors. So we have bachelors. <laughs> right. All so right. Some things you strive for. We'll take Chris's <laughs> advice there. When do you got your bachelors? And Dan, yeah, it's my second time. We're just associates then. I guess I'm. It's my associates. I, yeah. I cheated the whole thing, Dan. I I know I cheated. <laughs> off of your final exam, <laughs> uh, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Dan picked a drink that the last thing you do is you ask them to mix. You have a choice. They give you, I think they give you some options, some suggestions, but you can bring your yes. own, right? Yeah. For that, they give you four on the rack that they bring you out, first of all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's one of each. There's a red, a white, a kava, which is like, a sparkling and what's the fourth? Like a rose. Oh, yes, a rose. She's I've done this three times and I don't even. <laughs> That's how you know it's really, yeah. you really get your money's worth because <laughs> the chips and guac, which is always popular. Yeah, like chips and guac. And then at the end, mm -hmm. you get to. So I have learned that the, the teacher we had, Gray, who was who I would always tell you to ask for, is quite an upseller because. <laughs> The first time we did it, I don't think a single one of us got a specialty shot or anything extra. And the last two times I've had him and I've gotten a specialty shot, a double, an extra type of fruit thing, like <laughs> all, all of the add-ons that you could possibly get. And I walk out of there being like, huh, what's that such a good value? <laughs> because I just spent an extra $30 on this one drink. They do wait to the end to do that. It's, he's very sly in his presentation. He's good though. But but I was glad that we got him because I wanted to call and request him. But then I felt like I had called and added too many people and asked to be together <laughs> my reservations too many times. I didn't feel like I could call back and ask for request an instructor. So did, what's your diploma? Where are you ranking at Sangria University? I have my master's now. That was my third time. And I now have a new goal because Gray said there's some woman. Now I forget her name. Tina? Nina? Something like that. Oh, right. Oh. I think he said has been there a dozen times. Yes. Yeah. Oh, She's that's a right. local and lives nearby. And so every time she has guests come to visit her, they do that like as an activity. Because it's not like super expensive and you don't need a park right. ticket. So like it's easy if somebody's coming that's not really like a Disney person and doesn't want to fork over 150 mm. bucks to go into the park. And the Coronado Resort is really beautiful. Yeah. Check it out. Villa del Lago is an awesome spot to go spend some time too, isn't it? Where? Yes. Villa del Lago. <laughs> Where's that? You mean three bridges? Yeah, is that what a, you're talking about? Jersey. It's where these three bridges meet. So why don't you tell us that the whole resort is the town of Villa del Lago? He tried to explain it to me and I'm still not lost. I'm lost. I didn't really, I, I lost, he lost me like halfway through where, I think is that island is called Villa de Lago. That yeah. that's why the sign is there, the Villa de Lago, and the T-shirt. The restaurant is on <laughs> where the three bridges meet on the island of Villa de Lago. That's my understanding of what he explained. <laughs> you were paying attention. See, I don't pay attention in class. <laughs> I'm horrible. I got attention deficit. Okay, that's Sangria University, and. Where can we go to next? What was one another one of our big thing? Citricos. Let's talk about Citricos. It's I had wanted to go there for so long. You're right, Samantha. That was another one that I had canceled before. And well, always been I think two. you have to back up before Citricos because I don't know if you remember. <laughs> You're that was to the day there. that it was really raining. And seeing how I'm sitting here with a hurricane around me and the wind is blowing and the rain is pouring, I really remember. <laughs> yeah. Help me remember that was the day that we got caught in the rain. We did Tiana for the first time. At least mm -hmm. I did it for the first time. Other people might have done it before, but it was my first time. And we were in Magic Kingdom 
and we had plans to stay a little bit later to do Tiana one more time and then go have a drink and go to Citrico's. But and Dan had his very first geeking hear me out moment. <laughs> yes, that's true. On the way to Tiana's? Yeah. He looked up in the sky, looked down and okay, so hear me out. Did he say it like that? Raining. Just... He said, hear me out. Yes. <laughs> Right. Well trained. Training. Should we just abandon Tiana's and try to get to Citricos? Try to get to the Grand Floridian or Contemporary or somewhere and relax before it starts to rain. And we all said yes. And immediately it started down. <laughs> I think Dan, didn't you pull up the radar? So you were looking at I the did, radar. yeah. I was looking You're at like, the phone a little bit. And it was it. it was definitely coming. Yeah. So Dan had we, several we of those moments. That, we ducked into that store. I bought a poncho. Hmm. We were waiting, and Dan pulls up the radar, and I it sees it's coming in hard, for a while. It's coming in yeah. harder, and I said, "So, are we just delaying the inevitable? And if we continue to wait here, we're just going to eventually have to dart out in even worse rain, and then we're going to have less time before our nice dinner to cool <laughs> off and, or to warm up and dry off and not look like wet rats mm -hmm. when we walk into Citricos." And everybody said, "Yes." <laughs> So we just made a break for it. I mean, I was ankle deep in water at Magic Kingdom yeah. as we were leaving. Like yeah. my, I just tried to keep my sneakers a little dry, and then I tried to do the best I can. Then finally, was like, "Okay, it's up to my ankles. I'm just walking out of here, and hopefully not falling and you know in the rain." I'm for the first time hearing the reason why we left the dry space and went through <laughs> treacherous waters. <laughs> to all the yeah. way to the front of the park but so i'm glad to know that now Luckily, that there was molly and i were hanging back to the room anyway yeah, we to got change. on a ride in okay. yeah i'm not sure we we're gonna make it they were about to close it down yeah but we got on and then we tried to make it out but we did not make it before it started to no hmm. but we were going back to the room anyway so they were able to bring us back Changes right. of shoes and clothes. And yes. <laughs> and, and I had to and, buy a new, I bought a new and dress. And the silver lining is Wendy got to buy a new dress. <laughs> Which honestly, I would like to, I, I wanted to do anyways, but this just made me do it at that moment and then change into it and wear it at that time. Has anyone else ever bought new clothing at Disney World because they got soaked during one of their <laughs> adventures at Disney World? Raise your hand because... That happened to Margita and I. I'm sure everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, we, on one family trip, one of my family members had to buy an entire new wardrobe in the park because our sunblock exploded in the oh, no. transit. And so every item of clothing that they owned was covered in sunscreen. I'll never forget the first. It was one of the first times I went with the kids when they were little. My, my little Lindsay was eight years old, and we went on the Cali River Rapids. And it was one of those ones. It's like a 50, 50 on that ride, whether you're going to get soaked or dry, we got drenched and she, he was so upset. We end up right at the gift shop, right outside the ride. We bought her a whole new outfit. So it's a common occurrence. So Citricos, Kate and Holly, were you guys at Citricos with us? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was good. What was even before dinner? What was that little lounge area? What'd you think of that experience? That was really nice. A nice bonding moment, I think. I really like the space yeah, that they I had there. I've ever sat out there. Mm -hmm. all the time. No. We've, we've always ended up in Enchanted Rose. Exactly. And we couldn't go to Enchanted Rose because we were not the only people that had the idea to come inside there because it was raining. And we had a big group. I think we were looking for a table of seven, maybe. And when I, we were in line to wait and they had tables of two or four, but when I said seven, they're like, yeah, you can't wait. And while I was in line waiting, Samantha went over to see if we can get anything in Citricos. And where we sat was perfect. It we was. had a great waiter, John Luca. He took care of us and we were able to get all of us in there. We just kept expanding. I th think they thought we were <laughs> going to take over the whole restaurant eventually. Yeah. <laughs> People kept showing up. That was a lot of fun. Dan, Robin Madiri, I remember, was there. He didn't eat yep. dinner with us, but he stopped in for a drink. We just had a good crowd there. Dan, was that the first time you did Citricos? That was the first time. Hmm. And I, to your point, when I was invited to join this trip and then heard the agenda, I mean, there were several 
activities and restaurants that I hadn't done, and Citricos was one of them, and that was that was just awesome. Yeah, I, I had a great time. That actually, that before the restaurant, when we we're all sitting around, I think when we we're later talking about the trip about favorite moments. I think a lot of us said that was um, a favorite moment, and I think Kurt, you always refer back to things that just happened organically. It wasn't planned. It just was partially the rain and partially we were all in there early and it just was a time to, we just, we weren't in a rush to get anywhere. And I think we started telling some backstories of mm -hmm. geek and meetups before and things that had happened. And it just ended up passing the time while we're waiting for dinner. And it just, for me, it was very relaxing. I think a lot of people thought that too. So mm -hmm. to your point, Kurt, about things just happening or organically, I think that was a perfect example. Yeah, I think that's a lesson for everyone listening to the podcast is we always say, have a plan, but be flexible with your plan. And from doing this podcast for 10 years and asking people what their favorite moment was of the trip, it's very rarely something that you thought it was going to be. The big thing that you planned, it quite often is a more sentimental moment or a spontaneous moment like we had mm -hmm. at right. Citricos. Yeah, and isn't that crazy, Wendy? You said that a lot of people. A lot of people said that was like one of their favorite moments of the trip to just listen to all that. And it, it was because it poured down in the worst thunderstorm <laughs> we've seen in Magic Kingdom, and no kidding, like rivers running through the streets of uh, of, mm. of Magic Kingdom. Yet it it turned into such a great moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in my whole life I've never been so wet as I was in that trek through Magic Kingdom. <laughs> And another one Dan and I did from Guardians all the way to the Skyliner. That's right. Friday night. Yeah. We got caught in it there too. And that's another pro tip. You can be prepared with a poncho, but sometimes that doesn't matter. For some reason, the water just gets sucked up into your shorts and above. It's it's kind of crazy. In your shoes, the feet. That in was the worst. Your shoes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Pro tip, always bring at least two pair of shoes to Disney World. We were starting to worry that might not be enough. Get wet. Yeah, one of them will get wet. So what did you guys think, Holly and Kate, of Citricos? What did you guys have to eat? Was it anything good? We shared the uh, short rib. Yeah. Mm. And that was really good. Oh, I like those. Yeah. Anywhere in Disney World, I like a short rib. I think that's the thing for me, Citricos. I've talked about flying fish being one of my favorites in California Grill as far as the signature restaurants. I like that casual but I like the high end stuff. What and the like you said, the, the atmosphere there is really good. I didn't even realize that's where it was located at the Grand Flurry. I don't know why. I thought it was outside of the main building. I know Narcos Narcusi is. I don't know where I had this in my mind. I didn't know that's where it was. It was located up in inside the main building. But Samantha, you're a big fan of Citric Coast, right? How many times have you been there? Many. I don't know how many times I've been, but it's now. It's solidified its spot as my favorite place, restaurant on property. I think wow. the our little meetup there beforehand gave its nudge to the top because in January I had decided I was going to de decide between Citricos and Narcusis. And we had a terrible experience at Narcusis and they got rid of my favorite meal on the menu at Citricos. So then I was like, now we're back to square, <laughs> square one. Wow. Do they have a but, good meal for you there now at Citricos then? Yeah, so I've now switched. I used to always get the mahi-mahi at Citricos, which was my favorite meal on property, and they got rid of that. So I've now switched to the cobia, which is another fish similar. And they actually, I was pleasantly surprised on this trip because I also always get the arancini there, and they changed the arancini to be a, a pea and citrus arancini now, which is much preferred to the mushroom that was there before. So... Mm. It's back as the favorite, and they brought us a free round of champagne. So, <laughs> Wendy, where is Citricos rank for you? What did you have? I really like it. I always seem to get the sustainable fish of the day. I it wasn't a sound. I can't even remember what it was. I was between that and the cobia, but I liked what was with it. It was had a risotto with it, and then it came with some little pink shrimp on top and a little comfy of tomatoes. So, was it a grouper? Um, I don't think it was a. I I get grouper all the time and. I think it was, it might've been a, I don't know what it was. It was a white fish, but it was very good. Um, and I'm glad I had that. Mm -hmm. So the food it, there is very good. It got quiet too. Uh, it seemed like we weren't there that late, but it seemed like we were almost had the place to ourselves near the end, which was cool. Dan, where's it rank for you and your favorite 
Of, yeah, I would uh, say up there for me is California Grill, but I haven't been in a bit. And then Flying Fish is really good. And then this was fantastic. I had the, the oak grilled filet mignon, which it was just so tender. It was delicious. So from a meal perspective, I would say Citrico's and nothing against this group, but Flying Fish, I was with Jill on a date night, my wife. And so from an experience perspective, it was Flying Fish, but the food here, it was just, it was fantastic. It was really good. That is so funny. Did you hear what his favorite three were? Didn't I just say that? Like it was mine. <laughs> I, it's almost spooky. I think we're like brothers from Mother Mothers or something, Dan. <laughs> I don't want to offend you at all, but it's, we had these moments during the whole trip. We're both dads with fairly large families. I have three kids. He's got four. So I think we've been, our experience has been whatever the family wants to do. And we were like that with each other. What do you want to do? I don't know. Whatever you, I'll do whatever you want to do. Like we couldn't even come up with our own thing to do. <laughs> and then we started looking at the menus and if we either ordered the same thing or we looked at each other and went, Oh, I was thinking about that. I was yeah. thinking about that right. even happened in New York city. I think it did. We were it did. very funny. What's I, I was going to ask you, Dan. I, yeah. Oh. I would add one more thing about Citricos. Yeah. Not only did we get the free round of champagne, and then Samantha and Kate both got a dessert. But the best part was Dan's toast. <laughs> when Dan called me old on my birthday. It was not <laughs> on that not toast. Did you get carded that night, Samantha? I don't think I did. You know what? How rude. <laughs> what was Dan's toast? My toast was to new beginnings because of Kate and the new beginning that she has being cancer free. And then I said <laughs> old beginnings and I should have said less new beginnings for because it was Samantha's <laughs> birthday and all the friendships in between. It was directly like at me and he said, and old beginnings. I'm the youngest person at this table by a decade. <laughs> yes. And, and then Kate and Andy corrected me. I'm not actually, was math at the other side. I think we'll be. It was eight, supposed eight, to be a nice eight, moment, and I got a really <laughs> hard time for it. Dan, it was an absolutely nice was, moment. It was, it was a nice moment. Nice <laughs> and we all really enjoyed it. But you know what? This means that you're part of the geeking community, right? Absolutely, because yeah. If you didn't get Raz for something, then... <laughs> Then it wouldn't be as yeah. as much included, right? You're, you're not sure. one of the you're not one of the crew until Samantha makes fun of you. You're definitely <laughs> in now. I was going to ask you, Dan, what was one of your favorite kind of new snacks? Because you and I had a couple of interesting snacks that we had. You had a few on the radar. I know that because you were thinking of the Halloween specials they had in Magic Kingdom. You named one as we were going into Animal Kingdom. I'm thinking about. I talked about in my yeah. trip report and. Yep. Then we had the creme brulee croissant at Gaston's too. That was actually very good. I was going back to the chicken rapa that we had, and I don't know if that's available all the time, but that was like, that was in Epcot as a festival favorite. And that was one where I was getting hungry and we went to a couple different places and the lines were really long. And then we found the festival favorites and the the chicken arapa that kind of had a corn-based pancake that had chicken and uh, avocado and it may have had cilantro in there that I know some people <laughs> don't like, but man, that was, that was really good. And then that creme brulee, brulee uh, I, I know that I, I think I've seen some people don't like it as much as the cinnamon, don't like it as much as cinnamon roll. That's mm -hmm. a, that's really good. The, the vanilla cream mm -hmm. filling that's inside was, that was really good. That, and that's at, uh, um, Gaston's uh, Tavern yeah. Yeah, in Magic Kingdom. So that was, one of those two were probably my favorite snacks that I had. All right, Kate and Holly, same question. Did you have any fun treats that stand out for you on this trip? We also shared that creme brulee for song. Yeah, we had too. Yep. What did you guys um, think? Are you on creme I'm brulee sorry. team? Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. really good. Oh, good. I think it's I think it's better than the cinnamon bun there. Wow, so. I said the same yeah. things, but I've yeah. had someone else make fun of me because I, I said that. I think this is a Dole Whip orange, well, orange yeah. you know, controversy here that you're going to be on one of the two teams. I think you're right. Citrus swirl or Dole Whip controversy. Yeah. Anything else that was. Oh, what was that? that thing that we tried for breakfast? We had it on the side, a beignet, right? Didn't we try that? 
it was breakfast time and we ordered like a side order beignets and we didn't like them. Oh, oh yes. Where was that? We had fryer. It's fryer schnooks. We were we had a little egg and then they had like choice to have these. I think that's what they were beignets, but yes, there were beignets, but they were not good. <laughs> so we tried them. and We each took a bite and we like we didn't eat them. And I don't know if they're the same ones that the Tiana's beignets were because people have liked those, but the ones at Fire Talks are definitely not yeah. worth getting. Sure. The saddest little bagel I've ever seen in my entire life. They have a pretzel bun egg sandwich there that I always felt was a little dry too at fire tucks so i like mm -hmm. egg sandwiches but that i had it it's so hard to find one sometimes i take whatever i can get but that one's not that great I don't, so I, yeah when you guys went there we dan and i went to casey's he had on this list the corn dogs they had some mm -hmm. what was that corn dog thing we got yeah it was a chipotle mm -hmm. barbecue yeah street corn dog mm -hmm. it, and i mean it was interesting because it was a halloween kind mm -hmm. of special it was okay, but it wasn't like, I, I mean, it was, it's fun to go get the unique snacks, but in that case, I wouldn't rush back to get that. It wasn't like fantastic, but it was good. It was yeah. different. Yeah. I agree with that assessment. Kate and Holly, do you have another one you're going to run by me? I always like that. I love it. You float. Yeah. Kate and I remember that moment we were at a crossroads with a group of people and this yeah. was the same kind of controversy. The Dole with people went to the left around <laughs> yeah. aladdin's and then yeah. we went around to the right kate and i was holly with us i don't i think holly might have been it's with too us. Long. Got a spring roll instead yeah oh then you, you kept going to the spring roll cart <laughs> it's not a bad move either but yeah the i lava you was yeah it was good I, i've had that one before that's got what is that kate is that got strawberry fanta soda in it i believe yes and pop rocks on top <laughs> that's right that was a good, that was, it was hot. The heat, I felt like the heat was bearable mm -hmm. for August. I don't know how you guys felt. I don't know that it was as humid as you can. I've been hotter in August is what I've been telling people. I agree. Yeah. It but, wasn't until Wednesday that I feel like it. Yeah. I feel like hit me. last day was really brutal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There was a, I mean, I had a couple of treks in Animal Kingdom and maybe in Epcot a couple of times that <laughs> I got, felt a little overheated but the other one it was pretty good but yeah a nice cool treat in magic kingdom was good samantha did you think of some treats that you had that you liked for your I birthday through, i'm like I was like did i eat anything on this trip <laughs> I no pictures of it you were doing rides all the time i guess you people on your rides <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking besides our cookies and churros at nomad lounge which are always on my favorites list I don't know that I ate much. I could tell you a favorite, least favorite snack, which wasn't a snack, but. No. What was it? The salad, the, was it tuna, Wendy? Oh, that yeah. Salad, that that horrible had. salad? Yes, that wasn't very good. What was um, that? What it was the Connections. Uh, Connections Cafe. Hmm. We were racing. It might be that we were racing against the clock to get there before oh, they closed. Oh, so oh. it could have, that could have had something to do with it, but it, it's like a. I think, I think it was, it was a tuna on a salad. It was like seared I tuna on a over a bed of lettuce and little salad y things. So it's yeah. I know. Was it like a nickel salad? I don't know. What was it, Holly? Like a nickasay? I don't know. Yes, yeah. Niswa. Niswa. It was like a niswa salad with seared tuna. Oh, okay. right. Yes, you're right. And it was, the tuna was like ice cold. Yeah, it, they definitely pulled it in the freezer. Yeah, yeah, it's not supposed to be warm, but like it shouldn't have been frozen. Okay. Yeah. You're not giving me an idea to try that. I've tried poke bowls and stuff, this tuna thing that people talk about, and I've not had a good one yet. Well, You're not encouraging not me. Ball, but just not there. You're not encouraging me. And we also me went yet. to Skipper Canteen. Don't forget that. Well, we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Oh, okay. Hold on. You're talking about snacks, so. Yeah, I was, I'm going to get there. And I, Okay. Well, you brought up connections. I think Dan and I, I want to talk about the pizza at connections because I've always seen it and heard okay. about it. And I was going to do mostly quick service, I think, a lot on this trip. I thought I liked the pizza at Connections. Like if you tried all three versions, there's a margarita, cheese, and pepperoni. What'd you think, Dan? I well, so I'm you know when you think pizza in Disney World, sometimes you think of the puffy round mm -hmm. pizza that you get. This was not that. It was pretty big slices, and I, I think I had the pepperoni and maybe the cheese on a couple different occasions. But yeah, you know, for a 
if you're just looking for a quick pizza, I, I enjoyed it. It was good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was good. It's definitely the best quick serve pizza on property. I agree. I agree. Mm. It might be better than Viennapoli. Oh, she said it. She mm. said it out loud. Wow. I'm not sure about that. But <laughs> I gotta have Viennapoli. I'm going to Viennapoli. But, but it is good fun. pizza. I'll report back. <laughs> definitely a good option, and it's right there, you know, at the at the front of Epcot. So definitely a good option. I like the General's Child's chicken salad there. Mm. That is one of my favorites, but I didn't get it this time. All right, do you, Wendy, you're you're hanging on the edge of your seat to talk about Skipper yes. Canteen. So give it to us straight. <laughs> How did we end up there? Was that did we wing it or do we have a reservation? No, we actually went there when they we were had, just opening. It was early. And we had a reservation? Yeah. Oh, we had a reservation under our good friend Selena Roll because Oh, that's right. Okay. We but thought we, that I couldn't make a reservation because I had we thought I could make a multi-pass because I had a reservation. We waited a whole hour without that story coming up. <laughs> yeah. Now that you started, I think you need to tell it. <laughs> tell so, us, your planner. Pro tip number one. <laughs> if you plan to use multi-pass, make sure that you have everyone in your party has a park reservation before you try to book it. Because if not, it won't let you book anything before 2 p.m. Okay. And then your friends will all say, this is terrible, and move their reservations up to the morning and <laughs> leave you in their dust until somebody <laughs> finally calls and says, why will my friend Samantha come to our early reservations? And the cast member will say, your friend Samantha, are you sure she's going to be with you? She doesn't have any park reservations. <laughs> ah. she, she probably doesn't know she needs park reservations. To which Jackie it's said, like, oh, no. she knows. She and knows. knows. The funniest thing is I was away for a couple of weeks. I was, and I asked Samantha, I said, look, I can't be there to do that. Can you just, whatever reservations you're making, can you just make them for me? Because I am had that trip to, to Europe. I was going to be gone for two weeks in a different time zone and everything. So she made everything for me perfectly. That, the two of you is what really set me off because I logged in at 7 a.m. and I made mine and Jackie and Selena's and Dan's. And I don't know why I didn't make the, Kate and Holly's maybe you had I don't know but and so I and I could only get afternoon things and then Wendy booked her park reservations and Kurt decided we could be friends again on MDE <laughs> and so I went in at 8 p.m and made for Wendy and Kurt and it gave me like 9 a.m lightning lanes and I was like this is so real choice words <laughs> what the heck i logged on at 7 a.m and now these people at 8 p.m are getting nine o'clock reservations we were up all night Celine, or jackie and i on the phone trying to figure it out we originally thought oh i had made all the dining reservations and nobody else was on the dining reservations i canceled all the dining reservations and thought maybe it was that no because every everybody she started with jackie and selena moved themselves up early then she was like Okay, I'm abandoning you and I'm stealing Dan and moving him up early. <laughs> and everybody else was able to get, and then she would try to steal, move me up and I couldn't move. Everything was afternoon. And finally, a day goes by and she just got on the phone with Disney and was like, why isn't this working for her? And I had no park reservations for the entire trip. So that was. <laughs> well, maybe the audience now knows why I unfriended all of you because. <laughs> My Disney experience was so confusing. I didn't know where, where I was going or what I, who I was going with. Uh, yeah, awesome. and I will say, while that's a funny story, and it is a funny story, that is a great point. If you are the planner of a big group, especially if you got like multifamily and you're trying to get a bunch of people in there, you got to make sure that everyone in that group that you're trying to make plans for is actually all, they're all signed up for the same park at, with reservations on the same day. Otherwise, you'll be like Samantha and be like, what the heck is going yeah. on? <laughs> Hopefully not everyone's like us. But I had planned to just go to a blue umbrella and beg the day of to let me, <laughs> have them let me ride with my friends, but Jackie took mm. care of it. That was all to say we went to Skipper Canteen, though, without yeah. incident. They had it is a good place to go and relax on a hot day, especially when you can get there when they open up. I think it we mm. had a wonderful server who we was did. experienced yeah. from Trader Sam's, had moved over. She had lots of jokes from Trader Sam's and Skipper. I don't know if she did a lot of jokes on us. We were having fun over there, though. 
Wendy, it's really great. What do you like to eat at Skipper Canteen? I think I had, I shared, I think we got a couple of the cheese threads for sure. Four. Yeah, a couple uh, of understatement. That. <laughs> Four. Four, yeah. And then I think we had the capacho, right? The capacho. But I can't say that now without the heat. You got the kachapas, but nobody got the the kachapas. Ever since the whole COVID thing. (laughs) What else do we have? That's what I had. But what else was on the table? Someone got shrimp, right? Yeah, Mm -hmm. that might have been it. I think Andy got the fried rice. I always get the falafel there. Oh, right. Yeah. We got a salad. Any good drinks there? You guys have any favorites at Skipper Canteen? I always get the jungle bird. That's what I got too. Bird. That's good. Right. It's a fruit like drink. Sangria. All right. Yep. Sangria. Yeah. Remember, you guys got that. Oh, I Andy's was trying to get in. Diet Coke. Should we let Andy in? Hi, everybody. Hi, Long Andy. Time see. How you doing? He's all dressed up for his. Well, my Lions Cup polo, we were serving, we grilled steak, well, excuse me, not steak, but burgers and broths for members. Of the uh, National Guard tonight. Oh, nice. Perfect. We were just talking about food from our Disney trip. Did you want to add your favorite meal from Disney World on your August trip? My favorite meal had to be the steak I had at Citrico's. That was delicious. (laughs) Shocking. As always. Is that your favorite steak on property? It has to be right behind that. It's like probably a three-way tie between Flying Fish, the one at Topolino's. So two way. Well, then the one at Chico's pretty good too. So it's hard, but yeah, Chico, Chico's is number one. All right, good answer because that was the consensus before you got on. It's only number one because it's the last one he's eaten. That is true. We were just talking about Skipper Canteen. Did you go to Skipper Canteen with us? I did. We had the uh, the cheese bread <laughs> and, and cachapas, and nobody got cachapas afterwards. <laughs> nobody knows and that the, inside uh, joke. Except for us. I think a few people do. We have enough regulars that listen. <laughs> That's right. Where are we going next? I lost place. I want to ask you guys, was there any other food things that we wanted to cover? Well, there was one thing. Um, I know when we talked about going to Epcot with Jackie and Selena, I said, you have to have a glass of champagne in France. Mm-hmm. Although Selena didn't make it. Jackie did. And then I think a whole bunch of other ones made it. I'm like, okay, everyone's going to have champagne of France is my thing. So we all have to come and have a toast. So that was literally, I got there Saturday morning. So it was one of the first things that I got to do was to go in there and have champagne with everyone. So that was really fun. And I think it was some of the first time, let's say, I'm just looking at my picture. Dan was there and Kate and Holly were there. And then Jackie was there and Samantha and myself. So we all got to have a little champagne in France. And that was a real, that was fun. It was a great way for me to kick off the weekend. Yeah. Somewhere in the chat, I heard you guys were going for champagne in France. I said, Wendy must be here. I was wondering where she was. Yeah. That was a great comment. One thing I learned on this trip is you can actually go into the French pavilion and buy two bottles of booze and walk home to park with them and Mm -hmm. and be back at beach club in 10 minutes. Ah. (laughs) We made Andy our little errand boy one afternoon. It was a rainy afternoon. And we said, we're going to hang out in our room at the beach club, but we're out of booze. So can you go go into Epcot and go to France and buy a bottle of champagne and a bottle of wine? Do they have some of your favorites there in the French pavilion? They have our favorite champagne Mm -hmm. and they have my favorite rosé. Okay. That's why, because... You could you could have sent them to the beach club. Although I will say the champagne is well priced there, the wine is overpriced. Oh, that yeah, wine had like ninety percent markup. It was what was it? It was like a ten dollar bottle of. No, it's a, like, bo- oh, it's no. a twenty five dollar bottle of wine, but I think it was like forty bucks there. Because they charge you for that. You get that uh, wine stopper, yeah, but you get a free stopper. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which we didn't need. Yeah. And and then later we went to Beach Club and I love Holly taking a picture of saying, I'm being bougie at the Beach Club. And we were sneaking in our, <laughs> what, we, what Andy had purchased for in our little <laughs> coffee cups and bringing it down. Uh, let's talk, about, the, let's well, talk right? about the events that we did. And I'm thinking of the new things. Let's go back to Kate and Holly. What'd you think of Tiana's? Did you guys first time on that? 
My first time. Okay. Like eating a dog. I had done done it before. So what's the review of Tiana's? Everyone wants to know now that it's up and running. I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was great. Are you a fan of the movie? Yeah. Okay. Is that well, the, uh, yeah, well, Wendy, I, guess, I know Wendy's comment because I, I heard it out. in the Mickey van, minivan. <laughs> right. Go ahead, Wendy. I mean, if you go and ride Tiana, it's the same track, obviously, as Splash Mountain. So you know, like, where there's going to be a drop and where or there's going to be a curve. And so it's not new that way. The new theming that they did, they made it look physically very appealing, but there's no storyline. From when you get on the ride to when you get off the ride, there's names and there's people all over the ride, but there isn't a, doesn't tell a story like some of the other rides do. So I was disappointed in that. I think I had really high hopes for it. Um, and I'm hoping that maybe Disney goes back and corrects that a little mm -hmm. bit. Maybe they're going to get some other feedback. And when we were riding, as you said, in the minivan, and I had said that in the cast member who was our driver said the said, oh, I, I totally agree. Like he felt the same way. And I think that's what the buzz has been. I don't know anyone else feels felt that way, but I certainly did. Mm. He did also say though, that as he wrote it more, it gets better because he's not just like going into default mode of Splash Mountain. Mm. And he was able to start appreciating it for what it is. My, I had the same takeaway. And I also felt like they spent more time focusing on, they created a new original song for this ride and less time focusing on the music that makes the movie so loved by everybody. So mm -hmm. I wish they had put a little bit more into the music from the movie. Mm -hmm. But it's a very, like Wendy said, the animatronics are amazing, and it's visually very beautiful. Right. Good job. I, I like those opinions, very honest. So they could plus it <laughs> if they wanted to. Dan, what'd you think of Country Bears, the new uh, version? I'm glad you asked that because <clears throat> I orig I liked the original Country Bears. I was not a huge Country Bears is the best thing ever, and I got to go see it every time. I know some people are, and I know you really wanted to go see it, and I did too, just for the remake. I was actually very pleasantly surprised. It was a lot of fun. It was pretty crowded in there when, when we were in there. And everyone was getting into the songs and there was like the crowd was getting into it and cheers and singing along with some of the songs. Yeah, I mean, it was really good. I enjoy, I really enjoyed it. I wonder, I was just thinking as you were saying that, and I, I think I, I totally agree with you, but did, were they afraid that it had gone away and now had come back? And so they were, the audience was so excited that it was back. It almost felt like to me. Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, maybe there are a little bit more crowds because of that. They were afraid it was going to go away and it was coming back and it was pretty fresh. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's you know, over in Hollywood Studios, I had not been to this the Frozen sing-along before either. It's just things like that. You go into it and you're like, this is really entertaining. This is a lot of fun and it's funny. They did it. They did a very nice job with the, with the redo of that. All right. Kate and Holly, what do you think of the Country Bears? I was also pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. I, I liked the Country Bears before. It wasn't my favorite attraction, but I always liked it. And I was afraid it was just going to be too modernized with all the Disney songs. It was really very, very well done. It still had the Country Bear hmm. feel to it, but the songs that people know. Yeah. yeah. So, and it appealed to a broader variety, hmm. like the little kids that probably the Country Bear songs, original songs would go right over their head. These they can sing right along to, and they're familiar with them, and it was cute. I liked it a lot. I'm with you. I love the original. I, I like to give the new stuff. If they change things up, I like to give it a chance, and I'm pleasantly surprised. Did anyone else like me meet one of the stars at the stage door? <laughs> I mean, I fangirled all over the place when I saw Big Al. I saw him twice. I, Dan can attest to this. I was... Show dancing. Yeah, really starstruck the first time. I really didn't feel like I gave my all the first time, but <laughs> made up for. I had his T-shirt on the second time, so I'm really proud of that. Samantha, what'd you think? I was very pleased with it. I my family was going to Disney World for probably 20 years before we ever did Country Bear Jamboree, and we started to come to a point where we said, okay, we need to make a list 
of all the attractions we've never done before and do them. And that was like top of the list. And I remember the four of us sitting in there and being like, sorry, Kurt, this is going to hurt your feelings, but being like, what the heck is this? There's no wonder we haven't done it in 20 years and we never need to do it again. That kind of explains my personality. <laughs> so I was very happy. I, and I love a sing. I, I don't know that it's supposed to be a sing along. I love a sing along. <laughs> I usually make things a sing along. That's true. I, I apologize. I don't think we got a chance to do your favorite Jungle Cruise on this trip, did we? Oh, darn. No. It was closed. Oh, yes, it was closed. It was closed? Okay. Do you know something? And it was closed when we were in Disneyland. Now I know my my time period that I have to go to Disney World. Your stars, <laughs> the stars aligned. When they close it down to be made into Jingle Cruise, that's the time. Oh, mm -hmm. they're prepping up for, really, for Christmas I think, time. I think in Florida they were just doing a refurb, but they probably hit it a little bit. But I think in California they were down for jingle to switch it over andy any comments on the new stuff we were talking about the country bears and ti i have never seen either version of country bears really that's yeah. shocking on the what was it the trip before they closed it uh, we attempted to get on it but it was always busy so we didn't i think it was like the last day or the second to last day mm. i really enjoyed tiana's i mean i enjoyed Spl splash mountain but it like the others have said, it's, it would have been nice to have a little more of the story, maybe a little more music, but it was still good. Yeah. All right. I'm all out of stuff. What else did we do? <laughs> well, it was Moonlight Magic, which was oh, the, the whole reason. Oh, yeah. That was that, the whole reason for the trip. The whole we forgot all about the it. trip <laughs> is to go to Moonlight Magic at Hollywood Studios. <laughs> I think that should probably be in here. <laughs> well, we'll start before we do that. We did a four-park challenge, Andy, Dan, and I. So Andy just showed up. I was going to say, speak for yourselves. That's right. We, we did a two-park challenge. She had a four. You did half of the four-park challenge? We did. Yeah. We started you off. Yeah, what happened to you guys? We went back to Beach Club. <laughs> there was champagne that had to be drank. That's correct. Now, Dan, and I, interest. We, Dan and I said this was going to be a chill four-park challenge. We didn't mean that chill. It would be a very, a very chill one. I think we had a good intelligence, but then, A, it was hot. B, it was hot and, you know, <laughs> kind of altered our plans. Well, we knew we were going to be up till midnight or beyond, too. Yeah. So what did you end up accomplishing on your four-park challenge? All right, Dan. We went to all four, we went to all four parks. Yep, that was a big part of the challenge. We did. I think we, we, spent a, we spent a lot of time in Magic Kingdom, which was part of the challenge of the four-park challenge because we had plans in Magic Kingdom that day, which kind of pushed the other stuff to the right a lot and that was uh, moonlight magic was that night that was a so that turned into a pretty long day for us <laughs> yeah. we wanted to make sure we got a little bit of downtime in the middle of the day so we could hang with all the ladies and in, in the moonlight magic evening animal kingdom was a little bit short we didn't really accomplish a lot there but the uh, weather weather came into effect the weather that never came <laughs> yeah we were in line at the Kali river rapids Kali River for Rapids. And again, Dan made a good audible. Once again, we were in the middle of our lightning lane and the weather. I really wanted to ride that because I hadn't been on that in a long time. August is a good time to go on that one. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. It was so yeah. hot. But then, yeah, they came on and as we got in, we entered through the lightning lane. And then it was like, hey, a lightning has been within X one miles. Just FYI, we might have to close without warning. And then literally what? 35 seconds later, they're like, yeah, never mind. We're closed. So, yeah, Dan called an audible and we left. We had we to Epcot. Epcot. So, we did do the safari. So, we, we at least rode one we did. thing in, in uh, Animal Kingdom. So, we tried to ride at least one ride uh, in each of the parks. And then the rest of it was, and we got our picture taken in front of all the, the big weenies that we needed to yeah, we did we had to be our own photographer at magic at uh at hollywood studios but we still made it work but midnight yes. magic that was a thanks to wendy for the foresight to get eight reservations for midnight magic which is a dvc event first of all right i remember when you were doing yeah. that you were like how many can i book me plus four and as many people who are on the reservation and at the time we didn't even have everybody that was coming. So we just, I said, put anybody on it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So we just had eight random people on our room so I can get eight tickets. And then as people started joining our room, things got 
rearranged. That worked out so. really well. I thank you so much. Like I said, Dan and I really lucked out to have a great itinerary already planned, pre-planned for us, including Midnight Magic is a hard thing to, to get, isn't it? You, even your DVC, it's very popular. Yes. So there's Moonlight Magic dates, a couple in each of the parks during the year, and you have to have a hotel reservation during that time period. And there's a certain time period for, I think ours, I had to register us August 1st, and there could be no changes made to our hotel reservations past July 28th, which with this crew, that was a little bit difficult. <laughs> and then it will be, here's your registration date, you get to a virtual queue, and you have to sign up and wait till you get you know, your numbers called and all that, and you know, then you have to sign everyone up. So it's one of those deals. So you have to be on the computer early to get your virtual queue mm. to log in. And what's included as freebies for Moonlight Magic. So the nice thing about Moonlight Magic is you do not have to have a park ticket. We happen to, I think, all have annual passes, but if you were having a guest, they do not have to have a park ticket to get in at the reg regular Moonlight Magic mm -hmm. time. And what's included is obviously the admission to the park. And I think we got three snacks and then there were free Mickey bars later in the night. And there was a lot of character greetings, which I made the mistake of saying, I want to do this character greeting. And that took like half the time. It was super hot. And I was very sorry that I did. But after I was like an hour into waiting in line, I felt like I had to see it through. But at the end of the night, as the night went on, more and more people were leaving. And then I think we walked on a lot of rides, mm -hmm. I would say the last hour that we were there. We end up doing quite a few rides. So that's a great, yeah, we, we do. Dan taught me pro tips. So we've been using that term already pro tip from Wendy right there. And I think this is true. <laughs> if you're trying to do the Halloween party now, or even the Christmas party, you got to make a decision. If you're going to do character meets, a lot of those are special characters that, you, that people don't see. And my experience has been, those are long lines and you just said it out loud for this event and if you do that you yeah. might miss out on other things so you got to prioritize things you want to do i will say i was just reminded of a excellent snack i had on this trip which was the cookies at moonlight magic oh yeah which ones just chocolate chip cookie at the popcorn stands that you could use one of your snack mm -hmm. credits to get and i took one bite of it that day and then put it in my bag and i think i found it wendy when i came home on like saturday night <laughs> and I my arm, it was still as like soft and chewy as it was the first, the very first night. I was like, good cookie. I think Wendy gave Excellent. me one. Someone gave me one. I, I had it the I next did. day too. Yeah. yeah that, I only used water for my snack, Chris, because it was late at night. I just wasn't that hungry to be eating then. And I think we passed this popcorn, but I had the wrapped up cookies and we all had snack credits left. So at least we felt we could take those out. And then that's what happened with those. I thought they did a great job with the snack credits because there was a lot mm -hmm. of variety of where mm -hmm. you could expend those. Yeah. I don't know, if, Dan, what you got, but I got one of those phantasmic cookies. It was a peanut butter. Yeah, I got one of those too. Peanut butter and jelly cookie. It had a fancy yeah, it was good. <clears throat> Mickey it was good. from phantasmic scene on it. It was thin and that was the only snack I had. Like Wendy did, I did water. Anyone mm -hmm. else have a good snack on... Moonlight Magic. Do we get Mickey bars? Because I think I managed to drop mine like halfway through. <laughs> yes. Or make the yeah. chocolate. Something yes. fall off. I do remember that. I pulled those, that was stuff. free. That was part of well, the free. Yeah, that was free. Yes, right. that was an addition. So, so it's a good thing it was free because you pretty much dropped half of it on the right <laughs> on the sidewalk. I a, had a Mickey bar and then at some point we went back and I got a Mickey ice cream sandwich. That's so right. Those both were options that night. And one thing I do remember about uh, the Moonlight Magic, I will say that we, there was, I think there were six of us that were going around mm -hmm. doing some of the rides and we did Millennium Falcon, which is the perfect number. And yeah. we were going to do Wookiee yes. Bode and we screwed that up, but that's okay. But I, I just want to say, Samantha, you did a fantastic job of piloting. I think oh, we did a decent you. job piloting. <laughs> we, we got a decent score with that. I was actually pretty impressed. Especially for somebody that really tries it once a year. <laughs> Dan, you talked about Wookiee mode is, and we asked a cast member and they blew us off. Yeah. We just finished this Disneyland trip. We obviously had, it was extended. No, it was, ex was it the Halloween party? No, it was, no, it was we just, just a late night. Lightning. And we asked a cast member, could we do Wookiee mode? And they did it for us. And like, it took them 10 yeah, seconds. Yeah, that cast member was awesome. clever. It said, 
we had two strangers in the car with us and we were like, have you done this ride before? And they said, yes. We're like, do you know about Wookiee Mode? And I don't even think they knew about it. They hadn't. We're going to try to do this thing. It's just going to be Chewie screaming at us the entire time. Are you okay with that? And they were like, yeah, sure. And the cast member just said, no, everyone sit and no one touch anything. And she went through and put everything into position. Yeah. It all depends on what cast member you get, I think. Because that happened before to me at Disney World where the cast member set it up. And this time when we try to do it, the cast member that we got said, you have to know how to do it. Um, and this one literally puts really one button on worse. each thing. Mm. Yeah. Samantha, I want you to know a professional pilot just praised you for That's your true. That is a very good point. Piloting <laughs> on the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> Even more now, Dan. I know he made fun of you earlier about your age, but <laughs> have we talked about that yet? So will you all finally trust me to drive Wendy Fox around if, <laughs> if need be? No. I the last you. time I said I was doing that, everybody got very upset. <laughs> We're not yeah, sure least, you have your driver's you license. Can, yeah, at least you can rent a car through, through, through certain rental agencies. True. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all well, gone because now Wendy has a Florida well, driver's license. Well, I can now, now I have a Florida driver's license, so I'm good now. I can rent anywhere I want to. That's good. Oh, my gosh. I, don't, I feel like I didn't talk to Kate and Holly about this event. Kate went home and has responsibilities. How we didn't get That's a funny story too, though. <laughs> yeah, we did, we did try to get her to lie to her child, but she's a good mother. Did not listen. It was her child. I talked to her daughter personally, <laughs> and then we tried to guilt her daughter into letting her mom I did feel guilty about leaving, but I also felt guilty about not being home too. I felt like I was stuck in a hard place. <laughs> yeah, and my yeah. daughter said, "Thank you, mom, for coming home." I'm uh, happy. You made the right choice. When she you gets did. older and she's mad at you, she better remember that. That's right. right. She so we, did, we did miss you, but you did make the right choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree with Dan. That's true. Well, I'm kind of winding down here. Did I miss? Is there anything that you guys wanted to cover? Andy, I know you didn't get a, a full time with us. I'm glad you made it in in the last and thing. I won't lie. This since this trip was what a month ago. I probably forgot ninety percent <laughs> of it. I didn't write any downs. You All did. I know is I stayed at beach. I stayed at Beach Club. I got to test out the baby bed at Beach Club. It was very comfortable. Okay, very good. You also I, I did the Animal Kingdom Lodge. Yeah. Oh yeah, I also did one at Animal Kingdom Lodge. That one was also very comfortable. But I prefer the Beach Club one. I know that a lot of us go to the big geek meeks where there's a lot of people, there's 60 or some on, and it's really great because you get to see people you haven't seen in a really long time. But this particular trip, I think there were maybe 15 of us or so coming and going at different times, maybe less, like Robin Deary stopped by and Karen Scott Davis were there. And so we did get to see people, but it was a smaller group. So you got to interact with those people a little bit more than you do when it's a whole big Geek Beat. So I did like that it was a, a little bit of smaller group that you got to get to know people a bit more. I'm 100% with Wendy on that. It was nice with the smaller group to spend more time with Kurt and then be able to spend some time with Dan and Kate and Holly, who I usually don't spend a, a ton of time with. Samantha gets probably, and Wendy probably get annoyed with me, but it was nice to <laughs> spend time with others. <laughs> Andy will always say something on these big geek meat trips to me when he gets me alone and he usually nails it. That was a comment he made to me somewhere along the line. He surprises me with stuff and he's usually spot on. So thank you, Andy said that to me on You're this welcome. trip. And I agree. Samantha's so famous and, and a lot of you guys, <laughs> I, I, I don't always get a chance to hang out with you guys. Yeah. All right, let's go around the room with final comments. I'm going to start with Dan, I guess, with your yeah, favorite thing, moment. Before I say my favorite moment, I will say I really enjoy the closure of the trip because we went to Trattoria Al Forno for breakfast, had a great breakfast there, but just to wrap up the Not trip. Not about that. I know, and that's where we were talking a little bit about what your favorite moments are. Just a way to have some closure in the trip. So that was a that was really fun as well. But I think mm -hmm. Wendy already mentioned it. The Citrico's, just that, the, the talking in the lounge, and I was able to just sit back and hear a lot of the stories and the how friendships developed and all the stuff about early geek meets and the geeks and how stuff, what was going on. I, I really enjoyed that. And then that dinner was just fantastic. So for me, that 
coming through the thunderstorm, <laughs> drying off and being there. And, and it was spontaneous lounge hmm. where we wound up. And then the dinner was fantastic. So for me, that was my favorite moment. Yeah, that was a big one for me. And Bronx Zoo will never be the same for me ever again. <laughs> Just saying. Mm -hmm. things I don't know that go on in this community. And that was, <laughs> I was uh, having fun also, Dan, on that <laughs> conversation. Kate and Holly, what was your takeaway favorite moment of this trip? I think being back with Kate after having yeah. not traveled with her in over a year. And I was so happy that she got so much attention for those buttons that Samantha mm -hmm. made yeah. and all those little moments, especially the nomad one really, I don't know. It's really emotional. I'm even getting emotional talking about it now. Even maybe more engaged. But I don't know. I was just glad she got that much attention because she definitely deserved it. Well said, Holly. I wouldn't say when Samantha pulled out those buttons, I I didn't know that this was going to be... I thought I was going for a birthday trip. <laughs> I thought I was going for Samantha's <laughs> birthday trip. So... When she pulled out the buttons and was handing them out and I saw it, I was like, I just felt honored to be sharing it with everybody. And I was so glad to be back. It was, and when we would tell cast members and other people wanting to know and just the kind words that they said and all the small things they did for me, it was amazing. I thought they were very sweet and sincere in their praise of what we yeah. were there celebrating for sure. Thanks guys. Awesome. Samantha's crying, but can you, I think she's got a tear in her eye if I'm reading that properly. Well, I'm going to move to a not emotional memory. Okay. okay. Big, big call. And actually, and actually two. So one of, one of my favorite parts of the trip was our first, was that our first night? Yeah. Friday night that we went to Topolino's. We haven't talked about it, but. Okay. Oh yeah. We were at Epcot and we said, oh, let's go to the bar at Topolino's and get uh french is it a french rose yes. yeah and then we were with oh i forgot about this i said oh i'll just get us a minivan and it'll be quick so <laughs> and i i looked up the minivan and it was 34 dollars. and as someone who takes uber and lyft as like their second primary mode of transportation and pretty much anywhere to get from point a to point b for me is 30 plus dollars. I was like, oh, that's a steal. Great. And so I, I immediately booked it. And I can't remember if it was Kate or Holly said to me, like, it's not like it's that far away. And I was like, oh, yeah. We're going from Epcot to Topolino's. I think it was 0.9 miles away. And I was like, oh, that's a terrible. Let's take the bus. <laughs> so I canceled it and we walked to the bus. And then we were waiting, waiting, and we kept looking at the time and saying, I don't know that we're going to, we're going to make it because on the website, I think it says the bar closes at 830, which is a lie. And so we were waiting. They saw that we're next to the pop line. They're like, should we just go back to pop? For us, we were Animal Kingdom line. We're like, we're going to walk all the way around. Like, this is no fun. And we'll just take the bus. And if it's closed, we'll all just, you know, build his calendar home and we'll over home. I think we got off the bus at 828. And we had also gotten rained on that day. So we were all still a little disheveled looking. And we like booked it to somebody ran up ahead. I don't even remember who. It's in Jackie. Jackie. Hopefully knows. And we made it. But part, one of the funny moments of that was we get in the elevator with this couple. <laughs> and we're all wet and huffing and puffing. And this couple gets in, this young couple that's dressed up very nice. The girl was like in a long dress. The guy was in like a suit. And we both like pushed to go to Topolino's and I'm, and if we saw them and just chuckled to ourselves thinking we look ridiculous, we're all wet and tired from running and we're going into this nice restaurant. And they thought, I think they thought we were like, oh. and they were like, let's, they were like, oh, it's our anniversary. Like it's a special night. So we want to get a little bit dressed up. And we're like, no, no, no. Like you are dressed appropriately. We all look ridiculous. We're the ridiculous looking ones in this scenario. But we got right into the bar. The bar was like empty. Hmm. And we sat there and like, they never really pushed us to leave. I think we probably ended up leaving there at 10, maybe later. Hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. But that was just a fun and funny way to kick off the, hmm. yeah, yeah. the trip. The trip. <laughs> and then one of my other favorite moments, which we haven't discussed, 
was when we were transferring our luggage from Beach Club, uh, from, from Animal Kingdom Lodge to Beach Club. And said, in true fashion, we have a million, all these different people, a million bags, a food bag, an alcohol bag, whatever. I forget how many pieces of luggage. We have we like had. 27 pieces. Or something like that. And yes. Holly asked a very reasonable question because we each had our own bags that we could have probably gotten ourselves. And she says, so are we going to take these down ourselves or are we going to call someone? And Wendy just look, gives her this look like, how dare you ask a question like that? I'm not taking my own luck. Holly, no, that's not luck. what I said. I said, do you know me? I'm not going to be. I have, There's eight bags. There's alcohol. There's food things. If we would have needed like two Sherpas to help us get all these bags out of there. So, As usual, crazy. someone has to take their whole morning off to, <laughs> that's, that's to yeah. move your luggage. Right. We were impressed that we were at least all going to the same place. The Correct. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's the, that's right. better. We could get just one yeah. luggage ticket. Oh my gosh. I don't right. know, Wendy. Do you have a favorite moment from this trip besides the luggage move? <laughs> <laughs> I think I alluded to the Citrico sitting around at the lounge. I really liked that. And I also really liked uh, the breakfast. And I think to Dan's point of it was a nice wrap up. As you know, it's our family tradition to discuss what your favorite moment is. And I think that kind of helped make it clear in your mind. And one other, I think, fun moment, which is quick. I think we were coming out of Magic Kingdom the day we were going to Citrico's and we I pulled up the Magic, the minivan app. And I'm like, okay, I think we should take this there because the monorail might cl- shut down with all the rain. And we're like, oh, I don't know how much is that? I'm like, it's only $6 a person. They're all like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Six dollars a person. We all went, and we thought that was fine, as opposed to whatever the cost was. We were able to dollar cost to average it and decide that we would do it. <laughs> that worked out really yeah, well. So for the rest of the trip, every time we went to get an Uber or minivan, I said, "Oh, it's like fifty dollars." And when it was like, "It's only eight dollars a person." <laughs> <laughs> we did a good job splitting yeah. the cost. And it worked. Yeah, I think Andy's yeah. in four different undisclosed locations. I don't know. Hold where on, I got to finish the podcast real quick. Where are you? I'm in the I'm in the back seat of my neighbor's car. We're going to the uh, we're going to the bar to get some booze, some beers, and uh, we got our booyah here uh, first weekend in October on the road again. So anybody in Minnesota who's here, it's also Paul come. Um, we're gonna go plan our booyah tonight. So my favorite it has to be Dan's amazing speech when he says he looks at tape because to new beginnings looks at Samantha says to old beginnings. <laughs> that was fun. But then, yeah, just, I just have the breakfast tutorial. tutorial. That morning was good. And that steak and eggs, awesome. And then just seeing everybody in the smaller group was, yeah. made it worthwhile. That is a great yeah. breakfast place for anybody who's in the Epcot area. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good restaurant. Maybe one of the underappreciated restaurants at Disney World. I, I like the Italian there, too. You're right. They got some, it's hard to choose breakfast when you're there. There's some really good ones. For sure. Steak and eggs. Steak and eggs are really good though. I think I would I should have gone for that. I had the breakfast pizza. People say they've changed it, but I always felt like I never had it before, so I had that. But I think the tiramisu French toast is really good too. Can I can I add another favorite moment? <laughs> and this is this is only for me and Wendy, but Wendy and I decided to stop at the character warehouse on our way back. So just until so I was leaving Disney and driving back with Wendy to Sarasota. And so we said, oh, let's stop at the character warehouse on our way. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a big pin person <laughs> and also pin pusher <laughs> who has now gotten Wendy into pins. And they had a rack of pins for $1.99 a piece. Plus wow. we got our annual pass discount. So we spent, I don't know how many hours in that store just taking entire rows of pins off the wall to buy them. And then we decided, oh, we should stop at the other character warehouse on our way and see if they have any other pins. And by that time, we realized (laughs) we had left Beach Club four hours ago and we had not made it out of Orlando Disney World (laughs) proper. (laughs) And so when I said, well, let's get something to eat first and then we'll go. Because it's 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. We hadn't had dinner. 
she's and like, it's a two hour ride to here. Sarasota. So I and I've been at Disney, I have no food in my house. I pull up the map and I look up like restaurants near me. And the first thing that comes up is like Paddock Bar and Grill. And I was like, oh, Paddock Bar and Grill, that sounds nice. And then I look at the map and I'm like, oh, Paddock Bar and Grill is the restaurant at Sarasota. Right. <laughs> we had a left Disney. That's right. <laughs> so she was like, what else could we do? I was like, oh, I, she was like, we buy Disney Springs. I'm like, we're by Disney Springs. Like, we could just go to Wine Bar George. But then we said, no, we can't. We left Kurt four hours ago under the the guys that we were driving home. And we can't now go back to Disney and ditch without him. Well, <laughs> Samantha, you had one fun birthday, I think. You started down South Florida. Did I sound it? Did. I started in Fort Lauderdale, where Jackie Selena and I had the worst espresso martinis I've ever <laughs> had in my life, which was a bit disappointing. It took you about eight hours to drive a three or four hour ride, it seemed like to me, before you got up yeah. to see us. And then about the same getting over to Sarasota. But <laughs> I think you had a pretty good birthday, right? I did. And, uh, yes. And Kate... then I got a, birth a different birthday uh, surprise on the other end. Uh -huh. What's that? Deirdre. Oh, yes. You got a surprise from Deirdre over at Wendy's house. That was fantastic. And Kate, you had a big surprise too. So that's yes. something I didn't realize that you didn't know what was going on there. That's a lot of fun too. Well, I was in the dark. <laughs> All right. And it was a big surprise for me. And I'm sure Dan feels the same way. <laughs> I'm so glad we <laughs> crashed your princess party. <laughs> I know. Me too. <laughs> I had a great time. Thanks. Yeah. Me too. A I lot say of we fun. maybe yeah. do it again. Should we do sometime. it again next year? Yeah. Yes. Let's yeah, do my it. My birthday's in August every year. An annual. Okay. I'll I'll be right on that. Love it, guys. Thanks for hopping on and sharing your stories. I'm not sure anyone got anything out of that. Maybe, hopefully, there's some tips buried in there too, but we sure had a lot of fun. Pro tip make park reservations. <laughs> there you yeah. go. <laughs> we didn't really talk at all about using I call it the wrong thing every time, but multi pass. Yeah, we did some multi pass too. Which I say make yeah, friends. Fine. Make a lot of friends and bring them all down to Disney World. I think you'll enjoy it, even if you're adults. <laughs> Agree. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. I hope you stay in touch. I I hope we can do it again sometime. That cool. sounds great. All Thanks, right. Kurt. All right. Thanks for good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Thanks so much for inviting us, Samantha and Wendy, on this celebration trip. Dan and I really enjoyed it. And thanks, Holly, Kate, and Andy also for joining our fun recap of that August trip. Always have so much fun talking to you. I enjoyed listening back to that. I hope you did too. I know it can get a little bit chaotic, but... There is some tips in there too. If you listen very carefully, checking out the Facebook group, my wife, Argita, she was active this week. She gave away some of Auntie Judy's famous keychains. They are really handy with Disney design. This one's got a geeking on Walt Disney World logo on it too. And then she had an annual pass magnet that she gave away. So that was popular. And thanks for everyone who posted to get uh, their hands on that. She also noticed. That Big Thunder Mountain Railroad was temporarily closed for refurbishment. Well, it's going to be on January 6th, and they're going to be opening it up with some new magic in 2026. Wow. Big news there. Jennifer Pulliam meeting up with Shannon in the Disneyland Hotel. Just missed Gina. But yeah, that's always fun when you surprisingly meet up with geeks. I love that part. Thank you for sharing that with me. And some things that aren't Disney World, like the Northern Lights showing down in Connecticut. Margita took pictures of that. We were trying to see the comet last night. Didn't get a chance to see that, but she did see the Northern Lights. And then she was doing some training on a new announcement from Disney World, the Lightning Lane Premier Access. It's rolling out end of October for both Walt Disney World and Disneyland. Prices range from $129 to $449 per pass plus tax. And Vary by date and theme park. You'll be able to use it for one entry to each Lightning Lane experience in a theme park at your leisure. Are you going to try it? She mentioned. So that's a new offering from Disney World. Check it out. The Premier Pass. Yeah, so if you're not a member of our Facebook group, 
definitely check it out. It gets rave reviews from the listeners. And reach out to me if you've been a longtime listener, but you've never reviewed one of your trips with us. I have a bunch that I recorded in the can, as we say, that I'll be releasing over the next month or so. But if you have got a trip you'd like to review with me, reach out to me, kurt.stone at geekin on www.com. Some of the trip reports coming up soon is going to be Matt Davalos booked a trip with Margita and he's been listening for a little while and he just first time coming on the show. Kevin Curtis Allen is coming on with his trip report soon. Chris Futrell. Yes. Him and his wife, Brandy went to Disney world and I recorded them. And then this week I recorded with Ashley Kraft, who is an author of a book, the unofficial Disney parks holidays cookbook. And she's written like six different Disney related cookbooks. And she'll be on the show coming up soon. But after that, I don't have, I think I have maybe one other listener who reached out to me. But if you have a trip report you'd like to do, definitely reach out to me. Yeah, and thank you everyone who's been booking with the Traveling Tierras. Margie and Judy always want me to thank you for being supporters of their small business. Even if you book your own trip, you can book that and then transfer it over to the Traveling Tierras. They appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for supporting us. And, and Patreon.com is a website you can go to to pledge a donation to the show. I have many of our listeners that do that, and I appreciate you guys so much. I recorded a bunch of live recordings during this August trip, and I released another one. This one is mostly music. I know it's the got the Canadian band that I really enjoyed their show that I watched when I was there. There's a little bit of music from the House of Blues when we were on our little bourbon trail in disney springs dreams that soar at disney springs sometime over at raglan road so if you'd like to listen to the inner circle episode 193 i released it this past week become a patreon supporter go to patreon.com look for geekin on ww and thank you so much for my patreon supporters you know we're committed to helping you enjoy your disney world vacations reach out to me if you'd like to do a trip report book a trip or review your trips for plans, kurt.stone at geekin on www.com. Thanks for going geekin on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening and geekin with us every single day. We love you geeks. Keep taking care of each other and have a magical day. And I hope all your dreams come true. (laughs) 